came up in here. It says misery. And the definition of misery is saying that you're born again and still being in control of your own life. That's misery. That's misery. We've all agreed this morning that we need breakthroughs in our life, correct? How many believe this old nature in you will trip you up and keep you nose down in the dirt? Joshua chapter 1 I feel the Holy Ghost I feel 10 foot tall glory to God the power of God himself amen man I've watched listen I've been around long enough not near as long as some of you but long enough to detect misery when I see it and we fast to blame the neighbor the devil the preacher and even God Come on. But you ain't got to look no further than the person you look at that mirror. Come on. 
Listen, guys, if we can't be real here, we know we ain't real in that world. Amen. Right? Well, we, have, we just have us a baptism around here. Amen. God. Amen. Glory. Joshua chapter number six. Just going to read one verse of scripture as they all go to, to children's church. Glory to God. Big group. Somebody give the Lord a hand clap of praise for that big group. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now somebody say, I, I'm thankful I'm in here, not over there. Glory to God. But understand, sometimes you got to, yes sir, Joshua chapter number 6, verse number 1. Yes sir, we're just going to read one verse of scripture this morning. Hallelujah. The word breakthrough, this is not your Bible, this is the definition of, of, of kind of the direction the Lord wants us to go. Break, we need break, Lord I need a breakthrough. How many times have we said that? Well, the definition to that is the act or place of breaking through against resistance. Yeah. In the military, it's a movement or an advance all the way through and beyond mm -hmm. an enemy's front line defense. Uh -huh. yeah. An act or instance of removing or surpassing an obstruction or restriction. Well, we all rolled on our sleeves up ready to fight the devil, ain't we? Well, can I give you a little news flash? A lot of time, it ain't the devil that you need to fight. I am a firm believer that religion spends 99.9% .9 of time fighting a, a devil that ain't even got involved yet because he beats you at your own game. Just use it, just revving your flesh up a little bit. Glory to God. Now, I told you before, I'm going to tell you again. If you're, if you're still in control of your life, this morning, you might be a faithful tither, you might be a church member, you might be a, 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 over three programs, but you're not born again. That's right. Amen. Say amen. 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 You might not miss a church service, you might shake the preacher's hand and hug his wife, and, and you might do all the calisthenics of religion, but if you still control you, right. yep. come on. Yep. The by Jesus said, you must be born again. Yes, yes. Nicodemus, the great ruler, even tried to, to just, he wasn't trying to, he knew what, listen, now how can a man be grown and go back in his mother's womb? Jesus didn't even respond to that nonsense. You know why? Because Nicodemus knew. Mm -hmm. He felt. Mm -hmm. He felt the conviction on his life and he brought him down to a proverbial crossroad and said, now this day, who are you going to believe? Right. Glory to God. Joshua 6 and 1. While you're standing, let me give you just a little bit of history. Now, this is a group of people now that's fixed to, to, to take the promises that God promised them 40 years earlier. Yeah. But because flesh wouldn't die, they wouldn't kill the flesh, God killed them in the wilderness. Yeah. He marched them around on an 11 to 14 day journey. Took them 40 years to kill all that flesh. Yeah. Amen. Now God's got a group of people. Not all, but most of them. Come on. Yeah. Is listening to the instruction. Yeah. They, they, the Bible said that the Jordan rolled back. When the priest that was carrying the ark of God, which was a representation of God, amen, in that day, when the priest that was carrying, the Levitical priest, uh, put their feet in the, in the right. Jordan River. Now, right now, it's swollen. It's out of its banks. Yeah. But when they got in that water, glory to God, the Lord stopped the water. So from, 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 from upstream coming down, it built a wall. And from and on down, downstream, it dried up. Yep. Come on. Yep. Yep. And it stayed just like that. To God's people went completely across. They didn't get mud on their feet. They went straight across. So, uh, God told Joshua, said, get one man of every tribe to grab a big stone, not a little pebble. Right. I know it wasn't a little pebble because the Lord said, uh, Joshua said, put it on your shoulder. Yeah. You don't carry a pebble on your no. shoulder. You carry a stone. Glory right. right. to God. Yeah. Hallelujah. And, 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 the, and, and you set them up for a memorial to the kids and grandkids and right. the third and the fourth and yeah. generation. It's far forward yeah. and remind this is going to remind right. you that God brought his people right across yes. here. Yes. 
got them over there. Glory to God. And then the Lord said, now, circumcise them the second time. There's been a circumcision with, with Abraham, and we know with Moses, and, and God sought to kill Moses. Huh? Remember that? God said, I, God sought to kill him because he tried to buy a step, the order of circumcision on his own two sons. Yes, sir. And Zipporah took that and sharp instrument and circumcised. Come on, but that's another story, another time. But now, the Lord tells Joshua to get some sharp stones. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. Whoa. Iron has been out for hundreds of years mm -hmm. already. But the Lord says stones. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. The rock. Yeah. He's trying to teach them that if you allow the rock to cut away all the flesh, uh -huh. you can prevail over these yeah. enemies, these yeah. Canaanites, Hittites, yeah. Jebusites, Perizzites. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. If you let the rock do the cut. Yes, sir. Man, I'm going to tell you, you I'm about to have a kid. We haven't got read our text yet. Huh? Yeah. But now we bring it up to this place. Joshua, listen. It's already been told, Joshua, that the hearts of all the kings has already failed because they heard of what God's already done for God's people. Do you know God's got some things He wants to do for you? Amen. But if you could just get yourself out of the way and let that sharp rock, you know the rock that you stand on and present it to be Christ, let Him cut away all that. Joshua 6 and 1, are you still there? Amen. Some of you don't got mad at me and I ain't read the text yet. Don't get mad. Pray through. Amen. In fact, the title, Sister Kate, to the message for this breakthrough we need, pray through to your breakthrough. Yes, sir. Come on. Joshua 6 and 1, now Jericho. That's that city that they said it was impossible to penetrate that city. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Why? Because of the children? Because they don't heard about the God that these Israelites serve. Yes. Father, help us now. Stir us. Teach us. Convict us. Bind every spirit that's not like you. Lord God, we believe in you for souls this morning. We believe in you, Lord God, for restoration and hope and life that comes only through you, Lord. Again, we love you and praise you and thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' wonderful name. Church, say amen. amen. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Can you imagine that, that, that Jericho? you got to understand about Jericho now. It was, it was the oldest walled city in the world at that time that they knew. It was the most important city in the Jordan Valley. It was, a, it was the strongest fortress in all the land of Canaan. Jericho. The first rattle out of the box when God crosses them over. The first thing he's going to do and man, I just marvel. When I go, I reread scripture and just so let it soak. Let me go on a limb and say, if you're trying to read the whole Bible in a year, stop it. Yes, and read a, a verse of scripture and apply your life to it and let God deal with you about it. Yes. <clears throat> Jericho's got all this going for him. Now understand the, the, the method of circumcision, especially with a sharp rock. Yeah. Men's going to get awful sore. And there's going to have to be a time allotted for healing. Right. Time allotted for healing makes the army very vulnerable. In fact, it ain't no better place to attack an army if they do something, put affliction to their own flesh. Okay? But because God had already moved by opening up that, they heard about the Red Sea 40 years earlier. But that same God with a different group of people is now going to open another avenue for, for them people. Yes. So, so there was such a fear that was in Jericho and all the other kings of Canaan, the he, heathenistic kings, that they wouldn't even think. In fact, they wouldn't even go out of the city gates. The door was, was shut, locked up tight because they had such a fear Amen. of this God that they knew nothing about. 
So after they recuperated uh, the amount of time, the Bible said God now would talk to Joshua. And he's going to tell him exactly what to do to overcome this impenetrable city. He said, you're going to, you're going to march around that thing one time for six straight days. The seventh time, you're going to march around it. Six, and, and listen, and you're going to shout. Mm -hmm. And the wall is going to fall down flat. But the problem would arise if they didn't obey instruction. Am I too loud? Mm -hmm. Think about this. The hard part wasn't marching around the city one time and then the seven times and, and, and shout. Shout wasn't the hard part. But God told them to keep their mouth shut. Come on. Yes, sir. When they marching around that wall, don't you utter a word. And we're not talking about 10 or 15 people. Dear God, you, you can't get... 20 people to unify these days. Bouncing around like a rubber ball with half of it, a chunk missing out of it. Huh? So if they can if they can do the if they can do the word, if they can hear the instruction. See, that's why you're not gonna change my mind. There's a lot of religion out there, there's a lot of religious people out there, but to be born again, your life's got to die. When the Apostle Paul said he died daily. Yes. He didn't sin daily. Why? Because he died daily. To self. So we pick this up now. Remember, big wall city, they raised chariots on the top of the wall. It stood 21 to 30 feet high. It was 12 to 18 foot thick. Some believe it stood 40 foot tall. It's invisible. It's no way. It's impossible. You know, when you're, when you're holding on for God for your breakthrough, for your miracle, and you hear them little voices uh, from the devil in your flesh and the others around you, you ought to quit praying for that, that that's not going to happen. You're just going to fall subject like everybody else. That's when you got to stand on the solid rock. Glory to God. And I'm going to tell you, Jesus will always prevail. But all this up and down and in and out and all around, you become confusion. To the truity of the word of God. I'm trying to help you this morning. Oh, we're, fi we're fixed to be attacked. This nation is fixed to get attacked from within. Yes. Yes. Just drive down to the border. It's more than women and children. It's more than, than cartel members. There's military men now being caught on cameras. Full fatigued and marching. There is an invasion coming. Yeah. It's something that's going to shake you to the very core of your belief. Uh, some will cry, God, why? Why is all this happening to me? Uh, understand, before God arrives through a church, that church uh, shall be tried in the fire. Yeah. You can't live for God now. Right. And I listen, I got plenty of artillery and all that, but bullets and bombs ain't going to do you a bit of good when you're dealing with yourself. Right. Right. So here's this culture, this group. Without the wall falling, there, there, there's going to be no advancement. How many of you can say this morning, I feel like there's a wall standing between me and my promise. And I need the wall to fall. Glory to God. I've named it. I've claimed it. I've pointed at it. I've shouted at it. I've screamed at it. But nothing's happened. So it's left you frustrated and perplexed and, and double-minded and not knowing what's true and what's false and all these things. And that's why the wall don't fall, guys, because we still try to stay in control. I said the other day, and, and, and it didn't resonate good with some people, but I'm not down here trying to build my kingdom. Uh -huh. I'm still doing my thing if I want to build my kingdom. We're building a kingdom for the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. So, Jericho stood in, in the way of the promise God made to his people. Jericho. The big city that nobody... Nobody can go around it. you got to go through it. And I want you to think about something. It's not that big. It's big enough to become a great problem. But God says this, don't go around it. 
I'm going to make the way that you go through and you walk right, right through it. Huh? The promises of God. Yes. Now, there's before the wall fell, though, there would be a ceasing of the old, the old nature. I mean, oh, God fed them 40 years. Even though a lot of them died, well, he fed them. Amen. 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 Even though God had promised them the land and put fear in the hearts of their enemies, they still had to fulfill the covenant right. that God had began with Abraham. Yep. You see, it's the same way. You still got a covenant to fulfill. His name's Christ. All right. That that blood that was shed, right. that life that was given, was for our behalf. Yeah. But if you still own yourself, and it's a, and it's still in your mind, and it's still your way. There's a there, there's a there's a there's a stench of 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 uh, stink in the nostrils coming rising to the nostrils of God that God will reject every time. God, we need the wall to fall. Lord, we need a breakthrough in our life. Listen, you've got to understand again the covenant of circumcision is cutting away of the flesh. Paul. The whole New Testament is given in Paul's writings about keeping the flesh dead. Huh? We come, we come in here in one service, we lay around an altar, and I'm not fussing. Please don't. Listen, come, come more off to the church. You might hear some fussing sometimes. But this ain't fussing. I'm trying to help somebody here this morning. We come and we, we lay at the altar for a minute. To, we, some of us get up before we ever got down good. Uh, and listen, we, we shed a tear. Somebody hugs you and you think you go out on your way now and everything's fine. Only to know that your stinking flesh didn't die because you're mad before you get home. You're rebellious. Come on. You're, you're gossiping about somebody. You're, come on, somebody. Can I tell you? If there is a way that seemeth right to every man, but that way is always going to be dead. Right. It's not our way. It's the Lord's way. He's given us His Word to prove to you and I if we're truly following Him or not. Amen. Amen. Lord, don't write me no letters at the end of this thing. I'll just give the brother again. He can read them. Glory to God. Listen. I, I told the Sunday school class this morning, I'm too old, I'm too old for all that stupidity. Yeah. Yeah. I, God, God revealed to me the other day, you're getting exhausted. You're getting exhausted trying to fix things that's unfixable right. in the natural. Yes, until we lose our life. Do we even pray? Before we've said no to something, do we even pray? And ask what God thinks about it? Huh? Do we even consider that maybe He's got something different for you and I? Huh? But no, we, we because we're so living for self... That that's not even an option no more. You got your day planned, everything done, and come hell or high water, you're going to accomplish what's in that mind of yours. Yeah. Come on. But when God whispers in the softness and the stillness of His voice uh -huh. to change your whole mode, huh? <coughs> then all of a sudden we reject that because yeah. it might be too hard for us. I'm here to help you this morning. Yeah. Listen, yeah. but I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell what I'm going to tell what a lot of preachers won't tell. Religion is going to bust hell wide open, Amen. shouting and dancing, uh -huh. yep. when when everything's going their way. Yep. Or they're going to bust hell wide open, accusing the preacher or somebody else because they, they didn't do enough. Come on, when things ain't going your way. Uh -huh. But can I tell you, shouting or complaining, right. mm -hmm. hell's got a stamp on it. I'm talking about Jericho. I'm talking about the impossible. When we need an impossible move of God. Huh? When everything looks impossible. Huh? When it looks like no way, no how. Is there anything better? Huh? It don't fit on paper. Huh? It won't work in my mind. Huh? And my heart is all uh, stirred up about it because I don't see no way. Huh? Oh, listen, Jerry has got a hold of Jesus. Huh? And as he going back to Jerry's house with that 12-year-old girl, huh? the servant stopped and said, bother the master no more because your daughter's dead. Huh? And Jerry has put his head down. Jesus leaned over to him. I believe he put his arm around and said, Come on, we're still going to your house. You know why? Because that was a promise. Coming down a dusty road. Listen. And when 
Jesus and Jairus got there, Jesus put all that false religion out the door. I'm done with, with, play, with fighting against false religion. Come on. I'm trying by the help of the Holy Ghost to, to find somebody that's willing to die to self 24 7 and say, I don't understand how this is going to work out. I'm all for the welfare system. I am. But there ain't no Holy Ghost welfare system. Right. It comes down to the place we are we ain't. Yes. Stay with me now. Somebody wouldn't have come if you, if you thought it was gonna, God was going to bring you to a proverbial crossroads in your life here. Listen, it's for, your, it's for our good, friend. Yes. They have got to, before they can possess the promises of God, Jericho's got to fall. Uh -huh. But when you look at it, And you see it. And then you turn and look at the army. That same spirit 40 years ago that cried in the ears of those 12. Yeah, we see the fruit of the Lamb, but look at the size of the giants. Something's going to be different this time. Watch. Before the wall fell, Joshua encountered the Lord's Word. Yes, sir. Chapter 5, you don't have to turn there. You can write a, a, a note, 5, verses 13 and 14. Glory to God. What's going on here? So Joshua just kind of walked out to the edge of the camp. He's standing there looking at Joshua, looking at Canaan. And all around then he's looking at Jericho. He looks at Canaan. He looks at Jericho. And all of a sudden, the angel of the Lord with his sword drawn. And Joshua said, are you for us? Come on. Are you for them? Listen. The angel of the Lord, I believe it was Michael himself. But if it wasn't, I don't think we'll go to hell for believing that. Come on. But the angel of the Lord said this, I'm for the Lord. I'm the captain of the Lord's army. Glory to God. Amen. And you know what Joshua did? I know what he did. He didn't argue. He no. fell on his knees and began to worship. Glory to God. Yeah. I want to tell you, friend, I believe we see this a lot. Listen, before the wall fell, Joshua encountered the Lord's word. The answer was not if the Lord was for Joshua. The answer would be is Joshua for the Lord. Yeah. And that's the yeah. question that faces you and I daily. It's not that the Lord wants to be for us, but sometimes he stays his hand until you get all the way in about being for the Lord. Is this making any sense? Uh, Lord, friend, I'm talking about giving your life totally, uh, unconditionally, uh, no strings attached uh, and over to the Lord Jesus Christ uh, that we can be born again, uh, that we can be impregnated with His Spirit, uh, that we can be filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, that we can walk as men and women of power. Uh, it's about time to say to that mountain, uh, glory to God, it's about time Except the marching was, was obedience. It's better to obey than to sacrifice. Listen, circumcision is painful, guys. I've been in services before that God's been dealing with me about things. And I'm going to tell you, He took everybody out of the room. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, you, all of a sudden there was nobody around you, you didn't hear nothing else. You just, had, you just heard the word of God going deeper and deeper and deeper into you. And it brings you to the place. Am I gonna, if I'm going to believe God, am I going to serve God or am I going to serve a master? You can't serve him too. Jesus will be the master. Come on. Or something else will be the master. And I want to tell you, you know, the first time I heard that, I, didn't, I couldn't figure out what was going on. I said, that old preacher, he's a preaching right to me. And I felt myself getting frustrated. Oh, I know you good people never do that when the preacher is preaching hard. A amen. The preacher ain't preaching hard. He's trying to preach some truth in you that you can realize where we're really at with the scope of things. Uh, what you do, what you do is important because what you do will decide where you go. Come on. Uh, I'm talking about in life. Uh, it's going to decide. Uh, we come in one service. Woo! Glory! 
Hey, we're so happy, man, uh, that everything's going well. Uh, and then the next service, uh, the Holy Ghost scratches back. Uh, that smile or that song or that dance, uh, it shows that infected place. Uh, can I tell you this morning, uh, God is your doctor. He's your lawyer. He's your banker. He's your savior. Glory to God. He finds us. The Holy Ghost finds us where we're really at. Man, listen. Joshua fell on his face and worshipped. Thank you, Lord. See, friend, in here, with a kind of praise and worship and the Spirit of God moving, this is the easy place to worship. But God just using all this to teach you and I that there's some times, amen, that you've got to worship Him when everything looks dead around you. You got to worship him, no matter who's pulling on your coattail. Are y'all are y'all still out there? You got to worship for you. Glory to God. We, we listen. We pray for everybody. We pray for each other. But there comes a time in, in your life with God that you got to quit worrying about what somebody else is thinking about it. You got to get a hold of God. Can you say Amen here this morning? Listen. He fell on his face and he worshipped. Any that desires the faith and the fellowship of the Lord will worship the Lord and desire to hear what the Lord has to say. Man, I come, I, I come this morning not, not hoping I wouldn't hear truth. I come pray and believe I'm going to hear truth. Right? Now, truth has been taken from the Word of God, and it's just because some preacher says it, and calls it truth. Huh? Let me tell you, truth is not a, 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 come on, truth's not a word, it's not a pronunciation, uh, it's not a thought, it's not even a message. Truth is a person. Huh? His name is Jesus Christ, uh, the hope of glory. Amen. Yes. Listen, the breakthrough. The breakthrough began before the walls ever fell. Yes, sir. That's when the breakthrough, you see, it's the, it's the preparation that you get prepared for. Man, I'm not waiting till I get to the house of the Lord to, to begin to pray. Oh, no. You pray, talk to God before you, you ever get out of the bed. Because when you get here, it's no tell like me. It's no telling. It's things we got to fix and do and, 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 and take care of. And, and then we're talking to folks and stuff. And so all of a sudden, that first fruit of prayer that God says He desires, yeah. and it wasn't at home, and it wasn't at McDonald's, and it wasn't on the road down here. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you come in, and it's, uh, it's too late. To... So instead of the first fruits, mm -hmm. it might be third fruits, mm -hmm. or fifth fruits, or sixth fruits. But God don't take sixth fruit. That's right. He don't even take second fruit. That's right. He takes first fruit. Amen. Come on, that's the gospel right there. First fruit. Listen, the breakthrough begins before the wall ever falls. There's power for those that obey. Okay? Listen. There's power for those that obey. The Bible said you will come past the wall. Just go around the wall. One time. And on the last time, you're going to go around the wall. You're going you're gonna to break a sweat. That's what he's saying. It's going to take you longer. It's going to take you the number of times that's recorded to go around the wall the last time. Amen. So when you do the math, it's going to take you that many times longer. That many times that you, if not careful, will break rank by speaking. Yep. Come on. <laughs> by, by, watch, because a lot, now listen, did any grumble under their breath? Wasn't there. Don't know. But if they did, they didn't get away with it. Now we understand what happens after Jericho falls. And then I've always thought of this. And listen to this. I've always thought of this. Would you like some water, sister? You want some water? You got some? Okay. Okay. Uh, that fear is already stricken in the hearts of all the kings, right? Mm -hmm. They know they defeated already. Mm -hmm. So if it's the way 
If we look at it like this and say, well, why did we have to do what we did? Why didn't just God crumble the wall and we would have took over? Because there's no faith in that. That's why. You're saved by faith. There's all, you will always be a part of what God's doing. Every day of your life, you are a part of what God's doing or what God is not doing. Okay? And it's because the decision will come down to your obedience, to my obedience. Is that, is that scriptural or what? Yes, sir. If I obey Him, then walls fall. If I disobey Him, walls stay up. Now, was they all... And I believe at that moment they were all together. And they shouted. And the walls fell down flat. I love that. So now that impenetrable monster called Jericho has been taken down to dust. And God's people prevailed. The problem was when they got in there, that one of them named Achan, all of a sudden now, he saw something that he wanted. Mm -hmm. But the word said you can't have it. Right. Glory to God. He said, yeah, I said, God, a Achan wanted it. He, he, he throws some excuses around in his head. He said, well, it's the better our, our family. Huh? We'll have more than enough and we'll share with everybody. Self-justification. Come on, somebody. Huh? But can I tell you, he wanted it, but God said, don't touch it. Come on. Huh? He took it anyway. Huh? And this is the problem. The whole camp suffered. Huh? When, 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 when they went to Ai with just a few soldiers because Ai wasn't even a drop in the bucket compared to the strength and the size of Jericho. But because somebody rebelled against the word, it affected the whole bunch. Yeah. Come on now. I'm here to tell you, friend, Achan lost his wife and he lost his children. Glory for some selfish thing that he wanted. Oh, he died, but they stoned the whole family. They stoned all their animals. They took their tent and all their possessions and burned them. I'm here to tell you, friend, God is very certain and sure of the word. He says, shout. And if they'll shout, amen, in all the faith that they got in their heart. Psalms 5 and 11 says, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defend us, O Lord. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Paul wrote in Ephesians 2 and 14, he, for he is our peace, talking of Christ, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle right. wall of partition right. for us. You see, listen, they, they didn't shout after the wall fell. They shouted to cause the wall to fall. Goliath, Goliath, the big giant, fell. His fall began not when the rock hit him between the eyes. Goliath's fall began when David, with faith, Come on, there's a grain of mustard seed. Hey, hey, listen, I said when David ran at him, that giant with all the faith and courage he possessed from the Lord, that's when his fall began. He was a dead man, just didn't know it yet. That big old burly giant was standing there making accusations and accusals. He was saying all these things. He was, come on somebody, he was dead and didn't know it because he's standing. Not only is he standing against God, he's standing against a man of God that had faith enough to believe Believe what God has showed him huh? and God had told him huh? we can't be double minded huh? we can't be up and down huh? we can't be in and out huh? we need to die to ourselves huh? and stay connected to the true God of the Lord huh? and we will see the promises of the Lord Hallelujah. they're marching they're marching and they're shouting it was a type of obedient faith and the power in prayer. Can I talk about prayer for a moment? Jesus said in Luke 18 and 1, men ought to always to pray and not to faint. So when I look at this, I don't see any middle ground there. Men ought to always pray and not to faint. There's no middle ground. You know why? Because it's either heaven or hell. It's God or the devil. Come on, y'all. There is no middle ground. That middle road. 
And I thought about that. And I said, it pleases the Lord when he hears his people calling on him. <clears throat> but not just when everything is wrong. Amen. You still call on him when everything is right. Yes. See, it's seasons, yes. right? right. It's times in life, glory to God, that some of you right now, for some reason, I feel that kickback, that resistance. Well, that was a time in your life since you started coming here. You would have welcomed that. Huh? You would have welcomed that, that, uh, that God is, loves us enough to deal in the depths of our heart. Glory to God. But now, we, because we think we've arrived somewhere, that it's not, something is not fair. Show me in this world that we live in. Show me, amen, in our own lives when life is fair. Amen. Life is not fair, but life can be full of faith. Yeah. Glory to God. And it's faith that makes us established. We're rooted and grounded in right. faith, right? Yeah. So it establishes you and I. A amen. And when we're praying, it's just not a five-minute prayer. It's a continual, Paul said, pray without ceasing. Understand. That wasn't a place to be lazy all day and just, and just stay sitting down somewhere. It's meaning the whole mentality, I give my life to God. And the only way I can succeed in that is 24-7. So I stay in a prayerful mind. We stay in a prayerful mind. When the boss man or, or, or the pastor or, or, or somebody in the church or somebody in the world, when we feel like everything kind of gets out of, out of kilter, as long as we'll keep that prayerful mind going. And it's not this. Uh, if Brother Doug offended me, I, I don't go around and say God deal with Brother Doug. No. God deal with me. Deal with me, Lord, because if and never, he's never, ever. And I don't see that in the future either. <laughs> Glory to God. You know why? Because he believes the report of the Lord and he knows that we we ourselves has got to make it ready. We can't wait on somebody else to make us ready. Oh, but we lay our life down at the foot of the cross and we give our life to unconditionally to God and God, amen, the keeper of his people. Amen. Glory to God. Men ought to always pray. Yes, sir. This, can, I, can I interpret this? Men ought to always pray and if they don't, they will faint. Yes. I believe that's, a, that's an accurate because there's no middle ground there. That's right. And I'm, listen, we gauge we gauge at times how good the preaching, how good the service was by how many times we clap our hands or how many times we shout. That's wrong. Yes. What proves to you and I how good everything is is how much you give God. Yes. Man, I want to tell you, if you don't think this thing, this Bible gets hard sometimes, get into it and do something. Read it for yourself, not somebody else. Right? Read it for yourself. And I want to tell you, there's some place. You know why? Because it's a cutting away of the flesh. Yeah. There's no flesh can be saved. Right. This thing is all about a spiritual aspect, right? Yeah. Every moment of every day brings us to that crossroad. Of what are we going to do now? Are we going to go on with God? Or are we going to go to ourselves? Right? Listen, pray through. Do you pray through? That takes sometimes, that, that's a lifelong mm -hmm. of praying. Yeah. Well, the devil got after me. The devil got after me. The devil got after me. Well, where in that statement do we hear, but God? Come on. But God come through. But God made a way. But God see further than I could see for myself. That, but God still loves me cares for us. God's going to open a way. The Bible says He'll make a way where it seems to be no way. It's time to grow up in grace. Come on. It's time to grow up in grace, guys. Amen. I don't know where you heard somebody say that this life is just easy and this life is just nothing but a, just a pampered party 
and this life is never going to do you no wrong. I don't know where that come from, but it did not come from the Word of God. Jesus Himself said there's going to be many troubles and tribulations. Men's going to have a lot of pain and problems on this earth. Amen. But you've got to understand, y'all, this is a forerunner. This life here is a forerunner to decide where we're going to live the rest of our eternity. Yeah. Come on now. That's why this life, that's why this life will throw everything because, the listen, the God of this world is in control of this world. He's the devil. Amen. He's called the prince of the power of the air. He hates God and he hates God's people. So he's always trying. He's always going to come against you. But greater is, is he that is in you and I than he that is in the world, friend. Glory to God. Amen. I'm fixing to quit. As Brother John comes, things happen. I want to tell you this. Things happen when people really begin to pray. Yes. God showed Moses an answer to the bitter water when he began to pray. Hannah's womb came alive when she began to pray. It, her prayer went for years. Don't put a timeline on God. Solomon's temple would be blessed when Solomon began to call on the name of the Lord. All consuming fire would fall in Elijah's day when the Lord called on God. Fifteen years would be added to Hezekiah's life when he began to pray. Now understand something. It's a difference between our praying and God's praying. See, our praying could just be a bunch of words that's put together that sounds really, really impressive but holds no power. But the Bible said what God's really looking for is, is a, a man or a woman's heart that's broken, got a broken and contrite spirit. When they don't even know how to pray. And they just sit there and they're groanings. It's not groanings and complaint. It's groanings. Amen. For the Holy Ghost begins to take over. Oh, hallelujah, friend. Listen, when holy people begins to pray, huh, the Spirit of God would fill an upper room. Huh? I said, when holy people begin to pray, an angel would break Peter out of prison. Huh? When holy people begin to pray, the house of God would be shook. Huh? When holy people begin to pray, men would would be filled with boldness. Uh, yes, sir. The house was filled with the power All right. of God. Pray through to your breakthrough. We've left people after we preached before. I was invited to Tyler, Texas when I was out working turnarounds. My boss was so gracious to give me opportunity to, to, to preach revival different people. And we had scheduled one in Tyler, Texas and man, I want to tell you, God moved that night. Not because of me, but because of His Spirit. It's not about the preacher. Right. The only thing the, the, the true man of God ever wants from you is for you to just get all the way in. Yes, want the best for you. Want to see you healed. Yes, but the healing is not so much about flesh and bone. It's about the spiritual aspect of who you are in Christ. And the way that you get healed starts with being born again. Giving everything to the Lord. Now my my life is dead that I can live the life of another. Amen. Right? So we preach, called an altar service, and then people flooded them altars. And I want to tell you, God was just moving and moving and moving. <coughs> we decided we was going to leave, let, it, let it alone right there. And I was headed back to work. I grabbed my coat, my, my Bible and folder, hugged the pastor one more time after we've been praying for people and stuff. And I uh, went and found my vehicle and got in it. I started back to South Texas, to South Houston. And about two hours later, the Lord said, call the pastor. When I called and he answered, hey, Brother David, <laughs> You could still hear the cry of the people. They've been there already an hour before I left, but the cry of the people, oh God, oh God. 
He said, this thing ain't let, let up none. I said, that does my heart good. Yes, sir. But when's the last time we prayed three hours? Yes, Man. We hard pressed to pray 30 minutes. Right. We pray without ceasing. That's true. But sometimes the ceasing happens when you hit your thumb. Or somebody rings your phone. Or somebody hollers at you from across the street. When's the last time you just got locked up, locked away with God and just prayed? Yes, it don't happen here. Not like it should with me or anybody else. That's what's happened to the safe place of called church. Yeah. We're always in a hurry. Dear God, we got to beat that line to that chicken place. <laughs> or there won't be no chicken left. <laughs> you know why? Because we still cater to flesh. That's why. Yes. Yep. But when have you locked yourself away with just you? No cell phone, no TV, nobody else. And just locked away with God. I guarantee you. Do you hear me? I love you to the bottom of my heart. But I guarantee you, if you would do that, about two, three hours later, you'd come out with a different attitude. Yes. Yes. Your disposition would be different. Because now... This life don't belong to you. It belongs to Him. We're going to have a baptism in a minute. We can baptize the whole world. And if their life still belongs to them, they ain't changed one iota. Because the water don't change your friend. That's right. It's commanded, and we're going to fulfill Scripture. But we're baptizing this group because I've got confidence in God that they've been born again. Come on. You know why? Because their life shows that. It's the fruit yes. of salvation. Right. I'm telling you, they can dunk you underwater. And you can jump and shout and holler. And they'll go right out in that parking lot and, and, and throw somebody under. They'll cuss somebody. <laughs> That's religion. That ain't relationship. Yes, Christ is coming back for a bride that's made herself ready. Yes, She's ready to meet the Lord. Yes. Won't you stand to your feet and give the Lord a good praise if you believe this. Yes. We fight, and guys, I'm telling you, we, we, we fight every day. That old devil, he come to steal and kill and destroy yes. What, are they, what is he trying to do? He's trying to affect your life in such a way that now you can't believe the Word or the Spirit of God anymore. And at that moment, he's won a victory over you. And can I tell you, if that's the case, it's time to make your calling and election sure. Y'all be safe, guys. It's time in our lives to say, Lord, I'm all yours. Thank you. And listen, please don't just take my word at that. Getting this Bible right here, it'll prove itself over yes, and yes. over and over. That this life, to be born again, it can't be your own. Thank you, it's got to be the Lord's. Thank you. If you're here this morning and you feel like, mm. Mm. and that's just it, David. That's one of our problems. We, we put too much confidence in the way we feel. But if you're here and the Spirit of God is drawing you, stirring your heart. I don't know, maybe you got some bitterness and maybe you got some unforgiveness or maybe you got some issues in life that, that you you need to bring to the foot of the cross and be delivered from. And when I say that, it's just laying them at the feet of Christ and say, I'm not doing this no more, Lord. Forgive me, oh God, that I've held that in my heart. But whatever you need, I feel enough Spirit of God here this morning that He will meet your need. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. We give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. Oh, God, we just ask you now. Lord, as we just search ourselves here this morning, 
Lord, if we got a family member that seems like it's turned and walked the other way, if, if we got relationships that needs to be healed, God, if we got needs that needs to be met, oh, Lord, we pray, God, even right now, let us pray through. Let us pray. Let the walls, oh, let them crumble, let them fall. Let the walls, Lord, let them come down, Lord. Lord, the walls that God, the enemy put up, or maybe the walls that we put up ourselves, Lord, let them fall, oh God, oh God. 